Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Is honesty always the best policy? And you know, if you're within the sound of my voice, that must mean you're in the seats with once more. As always, my name is Dave Voigt, and I'm the host of this podcast, where we sit down with a wide-ranging variety of industry professionals and pick their brain about current projects, inspirations, and so very much more that we can think of in a, in a light and conversational fashion, because that's just how we do it. Uh, and if you'd like to subscribe to this podcast, and I mean, I hope that you would, because you're listening right now, uh, you can do that basically wherever you get your podcasts. Amazon, Google, Apple, Spotify, and plus, you can find every single one of our episodes archived over at our YouTube channel. Also, we'd love it if you'd follow us on social media. You can do that on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at either at In The Seats or at It's Podcast One. And finally, and... As I always like to say, most importantly, please give us a visit over at InTheSeats, InTheSeats.ca, for all the latest and greatest movie news, reviews, and anything else about the moving image under the sun that we can think of, because we've got a hard-working team, and I know they will appreciate your eyes on the product. On today's episode, we've got a fun one. We're looking at the rom, well, romantic comedy, uh... Honesty Weekend, which is on VOD platforms now, it's it, it's a it's a fun little exercise that uh, uh, basically follows the uh, the journey of a married couple who uh, are advised that uh, by their therapist, obviously, that uh, they have to have a weekend of total honesty with each other in order to you know try to save their relationship. But it's also the same weekend where they're uh, going to the country with a bunch of close friends for. Uh, for a fun weekend, and then, as you can imagine, the hijinks ensue. Uh, and it's a, it's a, you know what? It's a fun little movie, and it's a, it's an interesting twist on a, on a standard premise. But it's it's pretty well done, and we got the distinct pleasure to sit down not only with writer director uh, Leslie Ann Thomas, but we talked with uh, star Evan Watkins as well, just about the making of the film, how it got started, uh, the nature of it all, and. Uh, well, that's about it. It was a it was a fun talk, which I hope you enjoy because, uh, well, it's just as enjoyable as the movie, which you should check out on all VOD platforms now. But enough of me. Let's uh, get on with our guests. in the industry, and um, and so they fell in love with her music, and they want to put it out. I'm back. It's Sorry, good. Matt. <laughs> Hi, Dave. Back, Dave. I literally got booted off my network for some reason. Just all of a sudden, I had to reboot everything. That was the strangest thing. Hmm. It sucks. Sorry. <laughs> Zoom life. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I'm just going to suggest maybe you guys turn off your video as well, and just in case it's killing my bandwidth, because I okay. only need the audio for this. Okay. Yeah. All right. Go. Well, sorry about the technical hiccup, but I mean, obviously, first off, just I just want to say thank you for the time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the time. Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you. Now, I, I mean, I mean, first off, I, I really dug the film. I mean, I really got a kick out of it because I, I, honest to God, think it might be the first time that, I mean, while there's been movies that have sort of dealt with similar situations before, like this felt like the first time I've seen a movie that was kind of honest with the fact that we can be generally shitty to one another for no real good reason. But as long as we're honest about that, it kind of almost makes it okay. And I'm kind of curious, what was the initial inspiration for doing this film? Um, well, the film is about a couple that is, um, it's a young married couple. They're at, they've hit a troubled patch in their marriage. They're going to couples therapy. The therapist suggests they be honest for a whole weekend because sort of dishonesty, casual, habitual dishonesty has crept into their relationship. And, um, and so they, they don't want to do it, um, but they agree. Um, and the thing is, it happens to be the same weekend going out of town with old friends. And so, um, so the idea came from, I went to a dinner party. It was a super awkward dinner party with a group of friends because the couple that was throwing it had had a massive fight right before everybody came over. And so they were, they And while everyone else was like, this is awkward, I was just laughing through the whole thing. Um, <laughs> because I thought, what if you took some characters and, and a couple was having some issues and you just really threw them into some tight quarters and, and they had to deal with their, with their stuff 
uh, among other people. And maybe that honesty begins to sort of infiltrate the group and then everyone starts sharing their true feelings and secrets. I mean, there is a certain level of sort of honest hilarity to it. And I'm kind of curious, Evan, like when you first read the script, I'm, I'm kind of curious what you thought, because I, well, while I said like movies like this have been done before, but this really felt different kind of from the outset. Um, when I first read it, I was, um, well, I was delighted because, uh, y- you know, for a movie to have jokes is one thing, and that's always great. Like, but but for these to be rooted in truth and rooted in honesty, uh-huh. uh, <laughs> not to put too fine a point on it, but right. the fact that it like, you know, all came from a place of reality and something that people can identify with. And it, and it does get kind of silly and raunchy at times, which obviously you want, and you want the movie to be entertaining, right? But, but at the root of it all, um, it's, it was very relatable. And I, at the time, I, you know, was not married with a kid or anything like that, but, you know, old enough to understand these sort of, bigger crises that you that you sort of enter into when you hit your early to mid 30s and your life is sort of chugging along and you you sort of stop and look and go like hey are things are things all right are we are we still cool you know and sometimes you're not and you got to figure that out and I think that was a really fun thing to play with no you're absolutely right I mean it really it gave it all so many different layers and I'm kind of curious Leslie when when, it, when when you're when you're doing something like this and I mean correct me if I'm wrong because I was going through your CV uh, this is this first. This is your first feature you've produced, but this is the first time you've actually directed something. I'm kind of curious. What was it about, sort of doing this comedy and sort of tackling the subject matter made you want to sort of step behind the camera for the first time? Well, I want. I've always wanted to make a movie, um, and so this was my passion project, uh, and I, I wanted to create something that I would like, and that would be also producible, uh, on a, a small budget. And, um, and I, I just love playing with the stuff that is unsaid between people, normally unsaid, I should say. A lot of it's said in this movie. Um, and I like to create stuff that's really relatable and um, makes people a little uncomfortable and makes people laugh and, and also has heart because it's based in, um, in, in love and connection and humanity. Um, so like that, I just, I wanted to create something that was, I could knock it out in 10 days um, and I could get an amazing cast of uh, actors together, which I think this movie has. Um, I love ensemble comedy, really good ensemble comedy is like my favorite thing to watch. Um, So those were my inspirations. Now, I mean, walk me through the casting process as well, because I mean, especially with this type of film, I mean, as I'm sure you know, uh you know, casting is so important and i mean if you don't have that right balance then it just doesn't quite work but it really did click here uh thank you thank you for saying that i feel really proud of the cast of this movie um i had all the characters clearly defined in my mind um the most important thing for each character was that an actor could bring themselves they could bring vulnerability they could bring improv chops they could bring presence and um and just a lot of openness uh so boy did i sift through hundreds of casting tapes um and i was really picky i drove the casting directors nuts um and i just wanted to pull together people who would get into the pool and play (laughs) you know (laughs) Now, Evan, I'm kind of curious from your perspective, because, I mean, obviously, I can imagine, you know, when you get six talented people in sort of a house together, there is a temptation to riff, but at the same time, uh, you know, you're under the gun clockwise. I'm kind of curious how you sort of balance sort of the need to work versus the need to sort of have a fun energy about it as well. Uh, yeah, that was that was definitely a, a, a balancing act, but it was it was it wasn't that hard, really, because we we would run things past Leslie right didn't we Leslie I think we did most of the time oh yeah Uh, for sure and and it was like we would have an idea and be like oh can we try this or add it add a thing here can we change a thing and you know to her credit it was she was so wonderful at um not being too precious with it and letting us sort of play and dance with the script and do some neat things but yeah there was definitely times when when we would have a suggestion it was like maybe a little too much you know what I mean and and I think there's uh, I imagine I'm it's it's been a while now since we've shot but I imagine there was definitely some 
weird stuff that's on the cutting room floor that we could go back and go like, oh boy, that uh, that was a stretch. But you know, it's 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 better to sort of uh, go a little far and then pull it back, I think, than than to not uh, be able to push enough and and get those moments. Because then when you sort of chip away at it and you and you create a sculpture out of that bigger mass, um, you get those very specific, unique lines that sort of get thrown in and, and make it feel a little more real and human, you know? For, for both of you, how do you sort of, um, uh, especially on a shoot like this, how do you sort of rein it in and sort of find those moments where it's okay, it's time to get down to business? Because I can imagine at least to some extent getting lost in sort of the fun value of the moment being, you know, sort of having all these people up by this gorgeous house and just being stuck there for a bunch of days. I can imagine that at some point you definitely have to sort of tighten the belt and buckle down. I'm kind of curious just on the sort of mechanisms of how you guys can do that sort of in the day-to-day -day basis. It's uh, a really good question. Um, we originally, the script was a little longer originally and, um, first of all, had to cut like a couple of really big scenes out. Um, and just to narrow it down, focus it and make sure we could get everything we needed and give each scene time so that we could go through a couple of takes as written and then riff a little in improv. Um, but we would get going. And um, I just remember the, there's a scene where the guys are playing poker <laughs> and uh, and that got a little nuts. Like we couldn't stop shooting it because they were so funny. Um, and that was when Susan Walters, um, who comes in the film later, uh, came to set to visit. And she, <laughs> she was watching us shoot this. And like the guys are literally dripping tears from laughing so hard. And we're all laughing behind the camera. And so, so we had to not, we could only afford a few of those moments, Dave, because uh, we were on a very tight schedule. <laughs> when uh, I'm kind of curious from both your perspectives, uh, what ultimately led to to you wanting to to get into the business, like from both your angles? Because I mean, I'm always, I always love sort of hearing about, oh, this is the dream project. I wanted to make a film, but at the same time, I love hearing sort of the origin stories of you know, someone stepping on the stage for a first time and getting a laugh or that kind of thing. Like from both your perspectives, how, like, what is, I guess, what is your, your, your origin story? I mean, that sounds very sort of comic booky, but I didn't mean it to, but. <laughs> <laughs> I fell into some, uh, some acid and I uh, came out now. Uh, well, for me, uh, um, you know, when I was a, when I was a kid, uh, my older, I was the youngest of five kids, had a sort of a big funny family, you know, everybody was goofing off. And when I was uh, about eight, my older sister had a baby and they got a video camera and I pretty much confiscated that. And there was no footage of the baby whatsoever, but I would make like movies with my friends, you know, and uh, then eventually took it a little more seriously and, and studied uh, theater in high school and video production and then went to film school. And so it was like, you know, the basic thing of like, look, I, you know, I realized that uh, you have to do something to uh, make a living. And uh, I really didn't want to have a job that I despised. I thought that if I was happy in my work, that uh, it would make my life, you know, much better. Um, and <laughs> it, uh, the business is definitely a struggle because, you know what I mean? It's like, you want to tell that eight-year-old kid, like, yeah, it's, it's not quite so simple, but um, but I, I wouldn't trade it in for anything because like even, even the uh, struggle and the, the hustle to sort of have a career, um, there's, there's a lot of fun there. And I'd, I'd much rather be doing that than something that I despise because I think sure. it's just, you, know, you spend so much time doing this thing called work that you might as well enjoy it. That's, yeah. that's sort of my philosophy. But yeah, I love it. I mean, for me, writing, directing, uh, editing, uh, acting, all that stuff. It's any, any way I can be creative in this sort of this magical dream factory business is, uh, is what I love. And I'd like to point out, Dave, that Evan wrote the Harry peed in the trash can song. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I'm a, I'm a, a, a amateur musician. So I, I love playing guitar and stuff. So when, when we sort of had that moment, it was like, Oh, maybe we could do like a fun thing that, you know, that might harken back to their younger days. So it was uh, it was a definitely one of the more inspired moments that I think we had because it was just so much fun to to play with that you know as a cast. And Leslie, what about you? What got the ball rolling for you? 
what got the ball rolling? I just, uh, like, I was just a kid who spent Saturday mornings watching movies. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I was really inspired by, I wanted to be an actress to begin with. But it, I, I really think I was always going to be like a producer director because in sixth grade, I copied, hand copied a play out of a kid's magazine and cast it and produced it <laughs> in front of the whole school. It was a courtroom drama. Um, That's so, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I think that this has always been what I wanted to do. I mean, I studied, um, I had a great theater teacher in high school, like way cool, like would do really cool risky stuff and and um and and push us to be good um and and then I, I i had a little i studied theater in college i got a minor in theater um but i really moved as i got older into like writing producing directing just i like to be the person behind the scenes pulling the strings and, and can i add in that uh to your credit leslie you are a fantastic director and and i have to say that i really appreciated your uh, willingness to work with us so closely because a lot of times you know you'll do a project and the director like doesn't even introduce himself or herself you know what I mean and you sort of like you're kind of like wait are we shooting what are we shooting right now or did you say action you know so it was it was very nice to sort of be uh, nestled under your wing as it were so thank you for 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 doing that because it really was your vision so Aww. it was great to work with you yeah well, and that collaborative energy really does come through the screen as well. And I mean, I think that's part of the magic of the film because I think, like you said, Leslie, I mean, it's obviously it's something that's going to make you laugh. It's something you're invested in, but it's something you can sell at the same time. And I'm kind of curious when you're creating or when you're trying to put yourself out there a lot, and this is for both of you, like it really feels, especially these days, to be able to sort of navigate that line between, okay, I can get funding for this, I can sell this versus, okay, this is a little creatively different. This is, this has maybe got a little bit of an edge that will make me stand out from the crowd a little bit. How important is it from both of your perspectives to try to find material that will not only elevate you and maybe get you out there, but also make you stand out at the same time? Hmm, that's a great question. I mean, I, more than anything, I wanted this to represent my voice yeah. as a writer. Um, and so people could see that it's it's a kind of an interesting voice of, of very relatable envelope pushing comedy, a little a little raunchy, a little edgy, a little unexpected, um, a lot of heart. And and that's a, a an odd tone, I think, sometimes. Yeah. Um, and so that's what my my intention was. Um, I. I honestly, the only thing that was engineered in, in the way that you're asking in this film was when the scene came to me of the guys um, trying to convince Harry that his wife uh, is lovely. Yeah. <laughs> That's like the nice way of, of describing it. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to get crazy with that. And like, cause I knew that would get attention and in people, if you were, if you were drifting off would all of a sudden laser focus on that. Um, and also, I don't think I'd seen that in a movie before. Um, so that was really the only thing that felt like intentionally engineered. Everything else was just about being able to get my voice out there. Um, yeah. I would say um, you're talking about balance of like doing something unique, but also making it like sellable or whatever. Yeah, yeah like I the think, creative versus the commercial kind of thing. Yeah, I think, well, it's interesting because like whenever you're like coming up and you're creating stuff, everybody's like, we want original content. We want stuff that's, you know, we've never seen before. And then you send it in and they're like, this is too weird. Can you make it more like this thing that was a hit right. a year ago? You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, so you want it to be original, but you also want it to hearken to like all these great things that have already been made. So, I mean, obviously nothing is new under the sun. Everything's going to be compared to something else, right? Like they've said that like you can pretty much pair every TV plot to like something that happened on like Andy Griffith, right? Yeah. So, you know, it, it the, the, you have to accept that, but then you have to say like, you just have to trust that like, you know, every every band sort of makes their own noise thing where it's like whatever weird mix of ingredients that you're probably not even aware of you know, that you're bringing to the table, that you're, you're looking at it and in your head, you're like, well, I think I just rewrote Casablanca, but then like somebody reads it and they're like, no, I mean, it's kind of, but it's hopefully if it's good, it, it has your stamp on it that, that nobody else can 
sort of recreate. So uh, honestly, it's a miracle anything good gets made. <laughs> so I mean, to be a part of this film and to have it like, you know, uh, have these moments that feel real and genuine is like a it's a it's it's a, it's awesome because, you know, it's tough to pull off. How was the honesty behind the scenes on a shoot like this? Because I can imagine, especially when it's a short shoot and there's a lot of material pages to shoot, it can get a little intense in times. I mean, this, this, this feels like a bit of a gag question, but it's always a thing where, you know, this feels, at least just by talking to the both of you, this, this was more than just a job. This was something, especially Evan, maybe from your perspective, that's something you genuinely had fun on as opposed yeah. to just being another paycheck kind of thing. I loved it. I mean, this was like, you know, my first real feature. Uh, and um, it's, it's, the, it's the best feeling in the world because you, you never feel monotonous in it. You're always sort of progressing towards this, you know, project, this one big monolithic project. So, um, and to be able to build it with everybody else is uh, a ton of fun, especially in an ensemble comedy where you all sort of share the, the weight equally. Like everybody sort of has their own development in this movie. And um, it, it was a ton of fun coming to set. I mean, I, I definitely know that um, I tried to keep things sort of goofy and light. And <laughs> I'm sure that sometimes it was like, okay, can we focus up and shoot? You know what I mean? So uh, I think that just, um, I, you know, I, I have to say that everybody from the crew and the cast, we all got along really well. I, it's, to my knowledge, there was no problems or drama. Everybody was sort of laser focused on getting through the day and shooting all the stuff we needed to get done and making the film a success. And, you know, as an actor, I'm privy to far less stress than everybody else who, are, who is trying to, you know, uh, get the camera right and get the light right and make sure that we're, we're shooting all of our coverage. So uh, for me, it was, it was, I felt extremely privileged that I got to sort of goof off and get paid for it. <laughs> it was, uh, it was a <laughs> hell of a fun time. Yeah, it was, it, it was really a lot like summer camp, um, it, it, with a lot of focus. <laughs> and I was the camp director <laughs> and our producer, Colin, was keeping everybody on track. <laughs> well, that's a beautiful thing. And I mean, it really feels like, especially these days, that the collaborative art of, of filmmaking and storytelling. And I mean, it always takes a village no matter what it is, but it really feels like that genuine spirit is either in those $500 million movies or it's in the, the low budget movies where they're the plucky underdogs trying to get something fantastic done. And I think that's what you guys have done here. And I just want to say uh, congratulations again and thank you for the time. This was a lot of fun. Thank, thank you, you for the yeah, thanks for the kind words, Dave. It was great talking with you. Great talking with you both. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Dave. Bye. And don't forget to, to visit our friends over at Bay Street Video for all your DVD, Blu-ray rental, or purchasing needs this summer, as they are still open for curbside and some mailing delivery as well. Over at 1172 Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, you can give them a call at 416-964-9088. That's 416-964-9088. Or send them an email at baystreetvideoto at gmail.com for any of your DVD and Blu-ray needs.